Okay, yeah, for the first question here, can you tell me the answer? So, to calculate uh, the firm's average total cost, to calculate the ATC using the information uh, provided here, so what is the ATC then? Hello, yeah, just put your answer uh, in the chat, come on. Uh, yeah, okay, thank you, Kirsty. Yep, so that's absolutely correct. Okay, right, because, you know, when, when you're looking at the data, uh, you have average uh, variable costs, and you know, if we are adding up average variable cost and average fixed cost together then we are able to find average total cost okay but now here we have a total fixed cost so if we use the total fix fixed cost divided by the output then we'll get the average fixed cost okay so you know adding up all together then you will find 12 okay 12 dollars uh, for your average total cost okay right yeah so that's correct Okay, uh, what about question B? So, what is the profit or loss from that question? So how much is the profit or loss in that question? Come on, just, yeah, just, just throw me the answer. Uh, the profit is 3,200. Uh, okay, yeah. So you see here, total revenue, yeah, we have total revenue, this is the number, and then we have, um, well, you know, now, because, yeah, we have the total fixed cost, and, you know, if we are able to find the total variable cost as well, then when we add them up together, then we will find total cost. So if we use total revenue minus uh, the total cost, then we will get the profit or, or loss, okay, all right? So in this case, in this case, wait, Kirsty. Uh, should be, where? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, 12, 12 that's, that's the total, uh, average total cost. And if you multiply it by 800, that will be the total cost. So yeah, okay, so the answer is, is, is correct. Okay, yeah, the answer is correct. Okay. Right? Okay, any questions? Alright, okay. So, uh, let's move on to uh, question 2. Okay, question 2, 2A. Right, explain if it will be um, more financially beneficial for the firm to increase or reduce the output. So, what is your answer? Reduce or increase? based on the data given. Oh, okay, so if it, it, it increased, then can you explain, like quickly in, explain why they should be better off by increasing the output? Okay, because MC is still less than MR. Yeah, yeah, MR or MR is still uh, 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 more than uh, MC, okay? So if we still produce more, Okay, we should be able to earn more extra profits. Okay, so that's why it is going to be better if we increase the output in this case. Okay, all right. Yeah, so you look at this. So it's nine yeah, versus six. Okay, so we would rather keep increasing the output until ML is equal to MC. Okay, so yeah. Very simple for uh, question A. Uh, what about question B? So calculate the amount of um, yeah. So once again, profit or loss uh, if they are selling six six thousand units of output. So the answer is twelve thousand. Okay, twelve thousand uh, profit. Okay, so now you have you know six thousand uh, units. This data being uh, provided, right? Um, so here you have your, uh, well, because we know 
basically, if you are trying to find a profit or loss, yeah, you can find it by using average revenue. Okay, yeah, you use it to minus average total cost. Then you will get profit per unit. Okay, so here, so the pro, uh, the profit per unit is two dollars. Yeah, right. Yeah, and if we use two dollars multiplied by six thousand, then that will be twelve thousand dollars of profit. Yeah, as a total. Okay. All right. So yeah, easy. A B very easy. So let's go to number three then. Okay. Uh, number three. Okay. Uh, three A. Explain. Okay, which level of output? Uh, is the monopolistically competitive firm going to operate in this situation here? So which level of output? If you have this diagram provided. And just give me the number. Yeah, eight thousand. Okay, eight thousand, eight thousand. Okay, so eight thousand. Yeah, is is because right, eight thousand here, uh, because that is where M C is equal to M R. Right, M R is here, M C is here. So you know the intersection right here. That is the profit maximization output. Okay, right. Yeah. So that's correct. Eight thousand units. Okay. What about uh question B? Okay, once again to calculate uh the profit uh, or loss. Okay, so what is the number? Okay, twenty eight thousand uh, dollars. Okay, so uh can you give me uh, the working as well, uh, Cheryl? Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should be a bracket. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Right. So here, uh, I believe you have um your total revenue. Okay. So which is a uh, ten dollars. Uh. Yeah. Times. You know, eight thousand, and then you have your total cost, and uh, which is um six point five, times, eight uh eight thousand. So if you you know yeah, so if you do the deduction right, then you will get. The profit, okay, or you can just you know, uh, three point five. So the distance here, three point five, okay, because you know when when we are producing uh, at this output, okay, this is the average total cost, okay. You see here, yeah, when we are producing eight thousand, this is the average total cost, six point five, and we are selling it at ten dollars. So the distance here. 10 minus 6.5 that is 3.5 right yeah and that is your uh, unit uh, profit okay when you're using the unit profit multiplied by 8,000 then you will get the same answer okay all right yeah all right so that's uh, 3b okay and uh, let's go to 3c okay calculate the value of profits for the firm in the long run oh, okay all right so what is it going to be if you are uh, answering this question the value of profits for the firm in the long run yeah tell you that's right it'll be zero okay but uh, can you tell me the reason as well why it will become zero yeah yeah I mean, I mean that that's the result yeah because zero that means normal profit but the reason why it will earn a normal profit okay more firms will come in yeah there will be more entries uh, from from other firms and can you further explain this because more firms are uh, coming into the market something will change and because that something is changing and, and eventually you will earn normal profit so what is that something Something is going to shift. Uh, what is it? Okay, demand curve. Right, demand curve. Yeah, right. 
Yeah, okay, so yeah, just, just remember this when you are answering the question, just try to explain it completely, okay? Yeah, so that's the complete flow, how you explain why in the long run uh, uh, the monopolistic uh, uh, competitive, uh, you know, firms, they are going to uh, have a normal profit, okay? Yeah, right, because, you know, other firms, they're sharing uh, the market share, okay? So the demand for your goods okay is being reduced all right yeah so yeah that's that's c question c so let's go to uh, number four all right very quickly okay um okay all right so yeah talking about you know once again uh monopolistically competitive industry yeah so you have a diagram here uh question a so yeah once again identified the output all right so where where is going to be the output if you are looking at this diagram here so q1 q2 q3 or q4 yeah q2 right yeah once again yeah when mc is equal to mr okay yeah because you know we are in the private sector and so many people you know the major objective that they're looking for is basically profit maximization and this is where we can get profit maximization okay q2 right when mc is equal to ml okay right so that's uh question a uh question b identify the, the price charged by the firm in the short run so in this case all right thank you yeah so that will be b right because you know here Okay, at Q2, we are going to sell it at B. Okay, because, you know, this this curve here, not only it is uh, a demand curve, but it is also an average revenue curve. Okay, right? So here we can see, you know, how much we are charging or how much we are earning per unit. Okay, right? Yeah, in the short run. Uh, question C, identify, um, you know, per unit profit so okay so per unit profit so what is uh the per unit profit here that we are earning in the short run hello so per unit profit Question C. Yep. So okay. Thank you, Andrik. Yep. Uh, oh wait. Firstly, I I don't think you need to uh, you know use B minus C and then divide it by uh, Q two. Yeah. Because yeah. Right. Because B minus C is already the average profit. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Right. Okay. Right, because you know the average total cost is here, okay, is C, and then you have your average uh, revenue, which is B. So you know if you do, you know if, if you minus right C using B, then you will get, uh, you know, the per unit profit, okay, which is this distance here. All right, yeah, and all together, this area here will be your total profit. Okay, all right, yeah, okay. So uh yeah. So question D, explain what is likely to happen to um uh okay, yeah, once again to the mono monopolistically competitive firm in in the long run. But well, I I think it's just the same question as uh, the one we had here. Yeah. The one we had here, okay? Yeah. So in the long run, one well, yeah, once again, more firms they are going to get in because they see yeah, a nice profit okay earning by uh those companies okay and that's why they are very tempted to get into the market trying to earn some uh, profits here but you know as the result yeah, your demand will be you know split because of this and at the end you know you, you can see the demand is going go, going to the left so uh eventually you will earn a normal profit because of that okay because the price that you are selling will be getting lower so at the end right you're earning a normal profit yeah same same thing 
Okay, question D. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what about number five? Question five. Okay. All right. Question five. You have um, some data with you. Okay. So, profit, uh, profit maximizing firm okay, selling a uh, hundred units. All right, you have the price, you have uh, ATC, you have MC, you have MR. All right, so that's good. Uh, so, can someone explain this? So, why the firm maximizes profit by producing at 100 units? So, why? If you have to quickly explain this, so how do you explain this? Okay, right. So, tell you that that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, because currently they are producing at uh, 100 units, and in the current situation, look at the MC, look at the ML. They are equal. That means you are already profit maximizing, okay? Yeah, and that's why they are going to produce at 100 units, okay? Because that that is the best for them if they are talking about if they're focus focusing on 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 profit, okay? So that's that's A, All right? That's A. Uh, what about B? So explain whether uh, the profit maximizing firm operates uh, under perfect competition. Um, oh right, yeah, because you know in the question uh, they um, they haven't told you like what kind of market they are you know that that company is is working in. So this question is basically asking you if they are operating under perfect competition. Okay, yeah, Kirsty, uh no, because in perfect competition, ML is, is equal to P or equal to AL, right? Or, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, or is equal to uh, demand. And, and in this case here, look at this. The marginal revenue is $80, okay? Yeah, but the price or the AL is 120 okay? So in this case, we are going to expect, okay, the marginal revenue and 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 the price, uh, you know, both of the curves, they are not going to be uh, the same curve, all right? Yeah. So you know we are going to expect a downward sloping curve if we are seeing this, okay? Because you know P is is, is more than uh, ML at the same output, okay? So it's going to be a downward sloping. Okay, so you know you just have to imagine those two downward sloping uh, curves, right? That you always see, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, like this. Okay, yeah, you know, at the same output, P right here is higher than ML right here, right? Yeah. So yes. Okay. So B. Okay, that's very good. Uh, what about question C? Calculate uh, total economic profit in the short run. Okay, economic profit in the short run. Okay, two thousand. Um, yeah. So uh, okay, so so you know the per unit profit. Uh, using 120, okay, and then you know minus 100, then you have 20, yeah, and uh, multiplied by uh, 100, so you have 2,000, so that's 2,000 of profit, okay, of economic profit in the short run, okay, all right, uh, okay, all right, so that's all, that's all for the homework. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Any uh, difficulties that? Um, you saw when 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 you were doing the homework cool are we all good yeah good all right yeah because you know there's only one left this is it okay oligopoly finally this is this is the final part of the chapter yeah wow look at us like how how long have we uh, been spending in this chapter almost almost like a whole term yeah, that's crazy. Um, well, anyway, yeah, here comes to the end. Okay, right. Okay, so let's go back to well, yeah, because you know, last week we still have something left from uh, monopolistic competition. 
So let's let let us you know let us just finish this first. Okay. All right. So uh, very quickly, can you just tell me uh, the answers? Okay. Yeah. Uh, last week, you know, at the end of the lesson, we compare uh, monopolistic competition to perfect competition. Okay. Using so many uh, factors here. All right. Well, of course, because we we also learn uh, monopoly, so we also want to compare monopoly to monopolistic competition as well. Okay, right. So if we have to compare the two of them, yeah, using the factors provided here, can you just yeah show me the answers? So here, when we talk about numbers, uh, I mean number of firms. What can you tell us when you are comparing the two of them? Number of firms. Okay, monopoly usually one. Yeah, e even even though sometimes w w even even though you know sometimes you might not be talking about just one monopoly because mo yeah yeah because because you know sometimes uh you can you can still be a monopoly when you are able to get most of the market share. Okay, all right. But yeah, as, as, as an extreme case, we assume there's only one uh, firm in Monopoly. So one and a monopolistic competition, there will be many firms. Right, so the size of firms, come on. So very quickly, size of firms. Alright, then I guess I'll just make it more efficient. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep asking people. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm just gonna follow the orders that I see uh, from the chat. Okay, Andrew, so can you just you know give me the answer? All right, size of firms. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I guess you're trying to say monopolistic competition, small, yeah, because there are so many firms, okay, they don't have much market power, so, yeah, okay, right? Yeah, so, uh, Brandon, what about uh, entry and exit? Okay, all right, and yeah, I guess, you know, monopolistic competition is the opposite. All right, yeah, or, you know, basically no barriers. Okay, right, because, you know, that's why there are so many firms in this market. All right, yeah, and when you're talking about monopoly, yeah, there should be some reasons why uh, uh, there's only one company in the market. Okay, or there, there's a reason why they, they, they have most of the market share. Right? Yeah, it's because people they just cannot get in. They cannot compete uh with the monopoly. Alright? Yeah. Uh and we talk about so many, you know, factors, okay, uh in that part. Right. Uh okay, so that that's good. Uh what about Shero? Okay, uh short and long run results. So when we have okay. Monopoly, uh, profit maximization, y yeah, okay, or, or, or more specifically, uh, economic profit, yeah, most likely for both uh, S, uh, SR and, and LR, yeah, and, and yes, correct, monopolistic competition, uh, you know, e yeah, when, when you are earning economic profit, it is not sustainable. Okay, in the long run, it will go back to um, uh, uh, normal profit again. Yeah. So yeah. So this is the difference. Okay. So thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, Elise, uh, what about market power? Hello. Right. Yeah, less market power for monopolistic competition and way more market power you know in monopoly and we all know the reason okay 
Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, there, there's there's only one firm in that company, so they can do whatever they want. Okay. Uh, whereas when when we are in monopolistic competition, it's basically like um, uh, a perfect competition. There are just so many firms. Okay. Yeah. The only the only difference is. Is is they are able to differentiate their products, and that's why they still have some market power, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, let's go to the next one, Ian. Uh, what about allocative and productive efficiency? Any difference? Okay. What about monopolistic competition? Well, uh, not really, not really. Okay, even though it it, it is similar to a perfect competition, but not. Okay, not, right? Yeah, you need to think about why. Okay, in perfect competition, those firms they are able to achieve both of the efficiency first. Okay, and then you will you know know the reason why monopolistic competition cannot. Achieve both, all right? Yeah. So you know, it's it's all based on the fact that they're using the monopolistic diagram. Okay. Yeah. As long as so here's the thing: as long as you have market power, then you will have a downward sloping demand curve. When you have a downward sloping demand curve, okay, just like the question that we just did, or we we you know we just checked on. P is always higher than ML. If that is the case, then you will not be able to achieve allocative efficiency when P is always equal to ML. Okay, so that's one. And at the same time, as long as you have market power, then you are going to control your output, and you are going to, you know, try to uh, raise up the price. So if, if that is the case, then you are not going to bother to produce your output at the lowest cost possible. Okay? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's the reason why. Uh, as long as you are having a downward sloping demand curve, yeah, for your market, then you will not be able to get uh, allocative uh, or productive efficiency. Okay. All right. So that is very important, yeah. So uh, make sure you uh, understand it, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, let's go to um, Joey. Okay, Joey. Uh, talking about R and D. Anything that you can tell me about R and D. So this one can be tricky. Come on, just, you know, just try it. Now, what's the difference? Well, let's think about this, okay? In general, uh, who has more potential for R&D? Yeah, 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 right? Yeah, obviously, Monopoly uh, should have more potential for R&D. But in the reality, uh, why, you know, some of the Monopolies, they, they do not 
put much resources on R&D. So why not? Yeah, even though you have such potential. Oh yeah, right, exactly. Because they don't have competitors. Okay, and that's why, you know, the complacency that's, uh, you know, that time we were talking about, they don't bother to, um, you know, uh, invest in R&D. Okay, but it, at the same time, even though uh, monopolistic competition, you see, in, in that market, uh, the firms they have less potential uh, for R and D, but they 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 would pretty much okay put more resources in R and D. So the, the 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 main reason is what could be the reason like why you know, when you have less potential for R&D but you would rather put more resources in R&D in monopolistic competition well you know or, or anyone if you want to answer this question oh yeah yeah thank you okay yeah, thank you Talia thank you Ray yeah together yeah Kirsty yeah, def yeah differentiation right yeah so that's that's good okay because we don't want to get ourselves into price competition okay and that's why we have to differentiate our goods so that we don't always have to lower our price in order to compete with other people in that market so that's why they would rather put more money put more resources in R&D so that they can make a difference okay yeah as long as we're able to get a, a more different good then we will have a bigger market power so you know we we have better control in our price and also you know quantity and then and, and all, all, the, all that stuff right okay yeah so you can see there there will be some arguments okay in r and d this uh this section here all right so make sure you you know how to argue okay when you have to compare uh the, the both of them all right okay yeah so yes okay so r and d yeah that, that that's cool uh what about economies of scale uh Kirsty I think it's quite similar yeah yeah Yeah, in general, yeah, that that's true, okay. Uh, but you know, like like what I said, okay, and and also from uh, you know the the answers that that you guys had, right? As long as you are able to differentiate your products, there may be an opportunity for a little bit of economies of scale in monopolistic competition, okay? Because you know, because think about this: when you have like larger market share in this market in the monopolistic competition then the output should be higher right so you should be able to enjoy a little bit of economy of scale in uh, in some case okay right if you're able to differentiate your goods okay all right yeah yes okay all right so you know there you go economies uh economies of scale right uh okay so the last one Competition and cost, uh, Michelle. So let's talk about competition first. So what's the difference? Yeah, right. Yeah, higher competition for monopolistic competition. Yeah, right. Because you know there are so many. Uh, firms in the market and I guess it's the opposite for monopoly yeah what about the cost okay right yeah so you, you uh, yeah so you could say that yeah 
you know the cost of uh, production for mon uh, monopoly is lower because of economies of scale okay but you know some people they uh, do argue okay sometimes maybe yeah if, if the monopoly they, they are you know they are not able to utilize good economy of scale uh, monopolistic competition could have a lower cost because of the higher competition so here you can see an argument right uh, very similar to uh, the argument between perfect competition and monopoly okay when we're talking about uh, the costs okay all right so you know when you are trying to argue about costs uh, from the two markets here right monopolistic competition or perfect competition versus uh, uh, monopoly so you know this is the this is the kind of argument that that you can get all right yeah maybe you know monopolistic competition has a lower cost based on the nature of the market or maybe monopoly is able to uh, uh, overcome uh, you know this uh, nature of market and because they have a higher economies of scale so they can produce you know high at higher output yep and they get you know lower lower average cost okay right yeah so uh, I would say for R&D and the cost yeah there will be some you know some arguments all right yeah but uh, for the rest of them I think you know they are very clear okay so you know yeah so right okay so do expect uh, you know w when you are being asked uh, a 15 mark question you know about this topic usually is always about comparison okay comparing uh, different markets okay so this this two I mean these two parts here they are always for the evaluation questions okay all right yeah uh, yeah and here yeah last but not least uh, here is some exercise that you can um, you know refer to okay so if you want to take a look like like usually how how the questions are being asked so you can go here yeah go to here and then you know take a look of the questions and also um, you know the, the model answers okay all right all right so uh, I think that's all for monopolistic competition here okay so let's move on to uh, the last okay the very last market structure all right yeah finally okay so which is part four yeah, part four. Finally, we are talking about oligopoly. Okay, oligopoly. Uh, once again, when we look at the spectrum. Okay, look at the spectrum here. Okay, right. So, you see here. So now we have done this perfect competition done, monopolistic competition. Okay, done and yeah. From the other side, we have mon monopoly done. So. This oligopoly here is pretty much pretty close to monopoly. Okay, so you are going to expect oligopoly uh, is something quite similar to monopoly. Okay, all right. Of course, it has its own um, uh, differences. Okay, but you know you you are going to expect it's quite similar to monopoly. Okay, so you know when you are in an oligopoly, there will be less competition. And as an as an oligopoly, you have more market control. Okay, so this is what we are going to expect before we go into um, detail. All right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like like always, let's take a look of the assumptions. Yeah, because we always have to make assumptions. Uh, you know, before we can do um, you know any economic studies. Right. So in oligopoly, uh, we are going to have four assumptions here. Okay. Because I've told you, it's going to be like uh, mon monopoly, all right? So once again, yeah, oligopoly. Well, we, we know what that is, right? Yeah. So basically, it, it is. You know, it, it's, it's like a few companies dominating the market. So that's oligopoly. Okay. Instead of one company dominating the market, there are few companies dominating the market, right? So that's why you know it's going to be quite similar, quite quite similar, okay? Yeah, and, and and sometimes you know when when we were studying a monopoly, okay? Yeah, uh, we learn about some regulations, 
Yeah, some of the regulations they are actually controlling oligopoly. Okay, you know what if the oligopolies they decided to work together, right? If they work together, then basically they have become a monopoly. Yeah, and and that's why you know there will be some regulation trying to stop them from doing that. Okay, so you know this is what we call collusion. Right, so you know it's quite similar. So that's why you can see oligopoly and monopoly. They are quite similar. Okay, all right. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's why there, there. You know, there is only a small number of large firms in the market. Yeah, and just like monopoly, okay, there are always reasons why. Okay, you know why there are only a uh, few large firms in the market. Okay, and that's why you see there is a very high barriers uh, to entry and exit. Okay, yeah, I forgot to uh, put uh, exit as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that later. Okay, yeah, uh, and 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 also, okay, just like um, monopoly, you know, the products can be differentiated or homogeneous. Okay, yeah, because y you can see, okay, you can you can really see the pattern here. Okay, the mar the more market power that you have, okay, here, right? Yeah, it, you know, it, it'll it'll become more more or less. Uh, 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 unimportant, okay? Because you know, yeah, when when you are being a monopoly at the end, so you know, yeah, what's the difference between having something different or something, uh, you know, identical? Because you know, people they are they are either buying it or they don't buy it. Okay, they can only find you. So yeah, so you can see right, yeah, from a spectrum you can see a lot of things, okay? And that's why you see this is the reason why we are studying the market structure. Okay, we are not really studying, you know, exactly, yeah, what we are going to see in that market, yeah, in that particular market, because because so many firms in the reality, they are not really exactly situated in, you know, inside one particular market. Yeah, maybe so many firms they are in between, okay, in between different markets, and because we are learning, you know, the behavior of of different market structures, so we know in the transitions. What we are going to see, okay. So this is the ultimate goal for learning uh, this chapter here. All right, yeah. So so yeah, okay. So you know we just have to be more flexible, okay, right. But at the end, when we talk about oligopoly, yeah, you know the first three of them, they are pretty much very similar to uh, monopoly. But for number four, so this is basically the most important thing that we are going to learn in oligopoly. Okay, and that's why you, you see I, I, I kind of bold it, yeah? yeah. So when we are talking about oligopoly, there's one thing here we will always see, and that is the mutual interdependence. Okay, so this is what we will always see in oligopoly. Okay, yeah, based on the fact that because there are going to be a small number of large firms. In the market, okay, because you know there there are only a few firms competing with each other in this market uh, structure, and that's why they are all interdependent. Okay, all right, yeah. So you 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 see here, okay. So yeah, when we're talking about you know interdependence, right, we might not be able to see that in perfect competitions, or what well, perfect competition or monopolistic competition. Because you know the companies when they are in perfect competition or monopolistic competition, look, they are going to work independently, yeah, because they don't have much power, okay? Because there are so many firms, okay? Just because you are changing uh, uh, your uh, decision making or you are changing, you know, uh, the price, uh, the cost, or you know, uh, other factors, it's not going to affect much, okay? Yeah, because there are so many competitors here. Okay, just because uh, you are changing your strategy, okay, you're not going to affect much, right? Be the market share that you have is so small, so you have no market power at all. Okay, right? So they they are going to act independently. Okay, but when we are talking about oligopoly, it's different. Yeah, because when you think about this oligopoly, there are only a few firms. Dominating the market, 
so those firms they have a huge market share so if I make a wrong decision then all my market share will be you know taken by other oligopolies so that's why I have to be very careful when I'm making you know decisions when I'm in this market because whatever decision that that I make okay is is going to be creating some huge impact okay in the market yeah all right so that's why you see here yeah if one oligopoly is changing its behavior it can create a huge impact okay to the market or, or you know to the other firms because the other firms they will have to come up with some other uh, strategies in order to counteract okay so basically it's like playing chess okay it's like playing chess okay when when you are in oligopoly so you really have to think about like like how people react okay how your competitors react when you are using one particular strategy right now yeah or, or if you are you know trying to make another move all right yeah so basically it's like playing chess in this market okay yeah and uh, look so you know yeah just like what I said okay when we are trying to determine the price when we are trying to use non-price competition in this market we have to think it through otherwise look there will be some great consequences okay we 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 might lose so many market shares okay yeah based on the nature of the market here okay so you know it, it, it's just like history like when when we look at chinese history yeah i'm pretty sure you all know this you know piece of chinese history right here yeah three kingdoms yeah right we all know that so pop quiz here at the end who won the war mr L mr lao mr chow or mr sun come on give me the answer All right since you have been studying Chinese for so many years I suppose you do have some knowledge in the Chinese history come on yeah come on take this as a pop quiz anyone so who won the war at the end any any answers come on all right mr lao mr chow mr sun but no 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 one no no answers come on are you sure are you sure are you sure mr sun won at the end well look look i think you yeah you guys need to do some revision on the chinese history yeah because you know recently when we when we uh, uh you know if you have uh, watched the news yeah some uh, primary uh, teacher uh when when he was teaching um uh, you know some some history in in qing dynasty wow he got it all wrong that was terrible well but but and, and here look at the end not mr sun won the war okay yeah have you ever heard about this look pong sung zhang huh yu yan duck lay all right at the end someone called mr sima won the war and you know and he created jordan dynasty okay yeah so you know that's that's the history okay yeah and that mr Sim sima he was used to be in i got as a guan si okay right but you know at the end yeah 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 do all that you know, rebel thing and uh, yeah he he got the country okay right yeah so that's the history okay wait 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 a second like how many how many pieces of uh say diamond do you have have you guys uh finished watching i mean i mean reading i mean how many of them okay yeah that's that's good yeah what about the other three have you guys read uh should be right 
But even though Sam Gok Yin Yi is, is not really uh, you know a true history uh, for uh, for for you know for for what they were doing here, yeah. But you know, is 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 a pretty fun novel, yeah. Um, Oh okay, okay, yeah, that that's good, right? Yeah. So you know, if if if, if you have time, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you, they they are pretty fun, okay. Well, not the real one. The real one is is really boring. But you know, when when we are talking about Sam Got Yin Yi, is is pretty fun. Yep. So if 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 you yeah, if you have time, you have a spare time. Yeah, like right now. Okay, since we are not at school, so you know, take your time and do finish. Okay, the books they are quite fun. Okay. Well, I have one left, and which is uh, Hong Lao Mong. Yeah, I haven't read Hong Lao Mong. Yeah, so maybe is is a good opportunity for me to read it sometimes. Yeah, I I, I think we do have it uh, in in our library, right? Yeah, so maybe I'm just gonna borrow one, you know, before summer holiday. Yeah. So um, yeah, but but the rest there they're, they're also pretty good. Yeah, I I you know, uh, ba you know basically I I like um, Sui Wu Jun the most. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, yeah, this is not Chinese lesson, but uh, yeah, but you know, if you ask me, look, there is a huge fluctuation, uh, uh you know, about like like the Chinese uh, ability or capability we have in CKY, and uh, well, believe it or not, okay, I, I believe this cohort here, yeah, so I'm talking about you guys, yeah, year eleven, yeah, I think you guys have the have the biggest exposure uh, to Chinese. Yeah, uh, comparing to other cohorts, you know, you know when you when you talk about the year ten that I have, wow, they are amazing. Okay, they know nothing about <laughs> Chinese. It's like, wait, 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 am I am I even a Chinese? Look, something like this. Okay, yeah, this is terrible. Just go ask their teachers. <laughs> but you know, I I think you guys are yeah are in more exposure to Chinese. I don't know why. Yeah, it, it could be a fun investigation. Yeah, but but this is my feeling. Yeah, um, you know, from my feeling, I I feel like yeah, people in this cohort, yeah, you are more willing to, uh, you know, to be exposed, uh, yeah, in in um in Chinese culture or Chinese uh literature, you know, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Well. Well. Anyway. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Well, but but y you get what I mean, okay? When you are in an oligopoly, when you are trying to compete with each other, at the end, look, all of the oligopolies they might have some unpleasant uh, results, okay? When you keep trying to compete with each other, okay? Yeah, and and, and yeah, but but we always have mutual interdependence here, so that's why look, it may be inevitable. In this case, so we are going to do some more investigation in this uh, human behavior here. All right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, but last but not least, okay, can we just finish finish it up here? Yeah. So when, when we are talking about oligopoly, can you just give me some examples? Like when we are talking about like differentiated products in oligopoly, what could be the examples? Can you tell me some? Uh, you know, just throw me some products. Or, or surfaces, okay, yeah, wh where you think they are in oligopoly. Oh, airline, yeah, aircraft, right? Like the Boeing, uh, Airbus, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's one that that's very good. Yeah. W w anything else? When we are talking about differentiated products. And they are in oligopoly. Come on. Yeah, something that you know you you might you might drink every day or every week. Oh, TV channels. Yeah, yeah, that 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 that's cool. Yeah, I, I like that answer. Yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also true, right? Yeah. Or Coke, right? Coca Cola, Pepsi. Well, they are different. Yeah, they they are different. Yeah. Um, a real estate. Uh, yeah. I I think. If you talk about domestically, yes, yes, I think that that's true. Okay, so here, yeah, it, it may be internationally, it may be domestically, doesn't really matter. Okay, but uh, yeah, you you get you get uh, the idea. But what about this? What about homogeneous products? Yeah, this one will be more tricky, or will be more uncommon. 
So can you just give me like two to three examples? Uh, mobile service providers. Uh, so so Brandon, you think they they are selling homogeneous products inside this oligopoly? Uh, well, you know about oligopoly, I believe mobile services they are in oligopoly. But uh, what makes you think they are in homogeneous product? Yeah, I mean, it could be different. Yeah, it could be different, right? You know, talking about the quality of the surface. Okay, you know, some people, they always uh, criticize, like, you know, uh, I'm using, like, smart tone, and I don't always uh, receive uh, good signals, you know, things like that. L look, I don't think that is a, a good example for ex explaining homogeneous products. Yeah, but it is in oligopoly. Okay, but I would say it's more is is more here. Yeah, so we can see here. You know, we also have a spectrum. I think we can we can say there's a spectrum here. Okay. Yeah. So when when you are trying to do investigation or examination, yeah, you you can do this as well. So you can really you know try to see uh, if 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 they're selling homogeneous product or differentiated uh, products or you know some somewhere in between. Okay. So uh, well, I think I'm just gonna give you the rest of the examples okay yeah so even sport uh, sportswear or camera yeah camera talking about Canon uh, Nikon Sony right and and you know one or two others okay yeah but when, when we are talking about homogeneous products though so usually we are talking about oils yeah you know think about uh, the Arab countries okay OPEC right yeah oil and uh, cement steel yeah yeah, in so many countries, they are controlled by a few firms only. Even in in Hong Kong, when when you talk about cement, there are not so many uh, 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 companies they are producing cement in Hong Kong. So um, so yeah, so I would say you know these are some examples of uh, homogeneous products which are in oligopoly. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I uh, overran. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's all for uh, today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. All right. Yeah. So go 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 take your break. Okay. Bye guys. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye.